Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very excited today to meet you in AWS Commit Summit. And today I'm going to talk about debugging, which is the, you know, the most ancient, but the, maybe one of the biggest problems of developing applications. And I'm going to talk about how we are going, how we are debugging our, uh, our, our applications in the age of cloud and in the age of modern applications with distributed resources. So, so when it comes to debugging production issues, we are uh, most of the time have like many opportunities or many advantages of using solutions like APM or you know better log engagement and and you know log integration, and you, we are we are able to understand what's going on in the production by using uh, like several tools. Uh, but like when it comes to debugging pre-production issues, like for example, when some some something fails in CI, or like one of the tests, uh, you know, fails when you want to you know push a PR, uh, you you mostly are like alone with the CI logs, the logs coming from different streams, and like, you don't have the comfort of uh, troubleshooting uh, the production issues with pre-production issues. I'm not saying that like uh, uh, resolving production issues is comfortable, but I'm kind of uh, feeling and uh, trying to, you know, uh, I'm suggesting that uh, kind of uh, pre-production debugging is a bit underserved. And in this meeting, I'm going to talk about, in, the, in, the, in this talk, I'm going to talk about how uh, actually uh, the pre-production debugging would be more or uh, how can I say more useful or more easier to manage in, in distributed teams and in distributed applications. So before that, let me introduce myself and I'm Emra Shamdan. I'm an AWS serverless hero and I'm working as VP of product at Tundra. Uh, I'm like very into chaos engineering and observability and I'm, I'm proudly in the organizing committee of Serverless Days Virtual and Serverless Days Istanbul. And we are also organizing AWS Community Day Turkey in a, in a very near future. And here you can see me like uh, sleeping very peacefully when I don't know about software bugs. So let me just give the agenda of talk today. Uh, so I'm like first uh, I'm going to a bit maybe bore you with the definition of debugging because uh, even I myself understand very different things uh, when when you say debugging. So like what actually debugging means for for developers. So then I will touch to is debugging really a problem for distributed systems or you know just we are just making up it uh, just like proposing something. Uh, which is which is already not existing, and I will come to alternatives of debugging modern architectures using uh, several methods, and I will actually say to say that one, none of them is actually a solution that solves all the problems, and I will uh, introduce uh, the solution that um, you know I, I I found with the, with with my team about like what is distributed tracing and like. Um, how this tracing and non-intrusive breakpoints could help uh, debugging modern applications. At the end of my talk, I'm gonna make a very, very small and very quick demo uh, to, um, to show like how uh, the non-intrusive debugging would be uh, the best uh, solution for, for debugging applications. So I'd like to start with this, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you know, maybe you don't. Actually, uh, I made the research of like how, uh, why we are calling it debugging or uh, why not like de-erroring or de-issuing uh, our applications. So the, the debugging name actually first originated from Admiral, Admiral Hooper, who is actually writing a code uh, on, on, on a tape, uh, but there is a moth, the a insect on, on the tape, which um, prevents the program running. So he had to debug, you know, take the mod out of the tape uh, to, to make the application running properly. For this season, uh, we are calling it debugging. So there are also some other resources saying that even Thomas Edison said uh, bug for a technical problem, but like the, all the, the, you know, the first known bugs are coming from uh, 1940s. 
And I, I think it's very interesting. So like uh, Edmund Hooper actually debugged, the, he debugged his application use, using just like taking out the insect. And like for a very long time, the debuggers were actually humans. And then they uh, they were actually testing the applications like in, Q, like in QNA engineers uh, in, in what we can say in the modern definition. Uh, but they were actually coming with failure scenarios and they were uh, debugging it like like a real debugger, real software debugger that we know. Like they were actually taking step by step by the application to understand what's going on. Like when when it, when we come to the, today, like when we say debugging normally, what we understand is like in the same machine, or let's say in some other machine. But like let's let's focus on same machine for now. There is a debugger application, and there is this debuggy application, which is our application most of the time. So debugger application has access to debuggy application uh, or with, with some with some communication. And uh, it actually can can play and pause and stop and even change the code written in the debug application uh, by actually injecting its code to into this debug application. So most of the time debuggers are plugged into the IDs that we are using. For example, uh, you can use the Java debugger on, as a part of IntelliJ IDEA. You can use the you know the the GDB debugger you know as a part of other other ID. So so debugger is actually not necessarily part of an ID, but it's actually uh, is like very mostly integrated with uh, like every ID for now. So it works like this: like when you are debugging an application on your local. This is what you do. You know, we are all familiar with this, like how debug debugging works. I don't want to bore with bore, bore, bore you with this, but like my my point is, how are we going to debug such distributed architecture? So there are lambda functions, and also you know it can be also it doesn't necessarily we have to be a lambda function. You can always like uh, build a distributed application using uh, other other uh, compute services, say AWS, like Fargate, like ECS. EKS, even EC2, you know, you have a distributed applications and these distributed compute modules are uh, communicating between each other using asynchronous resources. So like the first, like the applications are now much more distributed through different compute resources. And the second, they are communicating between each other using asynchronous events. So you cannot just like set a timer and understand, hey, my, my at, at T0, my application is running there, at T10, like nothing happens because you, the, the, the event is just being transmitted and it will trigger another event, maybe at T11. You know, and um, it is actually uh, the time and the space of debugging changed a lot. So how would we, we can actually debug such a system? Uh, before coming to that, we, we wanted to understand if everyone, like if you are developing such an application, how you are going to actually developing it? Like, so you are like, you will need debugging while you are developing it, but we need to understand how people are developing such distributed architectures. So like our, the, the alternatives was like, do you, do you really use the only the, the mocking everything and you are still uh, developing like, a, a, like a, you are developing a local application for your, let's say homework on, on college. And there are still like, a, not actually more than I, I would expect, like 20% of people are using mocking and they are using uh, the local functions, local local applications uh, playing with the mocks. So like the, some of the people is just like the, almost 30% of the attendees uh, say that we, they are developing applications fully remote using remote closed cloud resources. So like the, they are not uh, even like using the, let's say you are developing a Lambda function or let's say you are developing a, a application on ECS. You are develop, you are just like deploying it on the on, on cloud and you are just seeing how it is you know, inter interacting with the other resources. This is like how fully remote development is in our opinion. But like almost half of the, our attendees say it, like they are using mix of local and remote, which means that Maybe they are using their uh, applications on local, but all the rest of the resources, they are not mocking anything, is connected to, to SNS. So, so to, to, I'm not, I'm just like making up with SNS, but 
uh, they are connected with connected to cloud resources, which can be SNS, of course, or, or anything that you can imagine. So this application is uh, I'm, the application that I'm just like motivated, focused on developing is on my local, but all the rest is on on cloud. Uh, there are also other alternatives. So as I say, you can we can uh, develop using um, local replicas. There is there is local stack component like. It's not a company, I suppose. It's a kind of a very, very useful tool to replicate any, any cloud resource on your local. Uh, and you can work with local replicas, but this, this has some problems of, you know, uh, when you when you are working with local replica, you may not be very sure about, uh, is, the, is this local replica reflects the latest version of the cloud service that you are, you are now using the local replica? So like, and the problem is that maybe you should also update this page. This so, so you may be missing the point of developing cloud applications. And the, uh, the other alternative is, that you, as I said, you can put everything else on the cloud, but you can focus on, the, on your application on your local. And the, another alternative, you can put everything onto cloud again. Uh, but you can you can tie into cloud services via ports while you are developing your applications. And this last alternative, and the, in our opinion, the, in my opinion, the best alternative is like you are spinning up everything on cloud, and you are you are developing your applications against cloud resources, and your application is also being deployed to cloud, you know, continuously to to understand and uh, to you know uh, to see what's happening there. So uh, these are the uh, the you know approaches to developing microservices on uh, on on cloud uh, on cloud actually. So developing microservices using asynchronous resources and uh, the cloud compute resources. So this is example from coming. Uh, this example is coming from uh, the Slack. Uh, so in this article, Slack explains like how they are actually setting up development environments for their engineers. So they have different different uh, cloud environments for each and every developer, and this each and every developer can use uh, the the cloud version of the Slack application. So when they wanted to you know build something. They are just like using a replica of the identical like the Slack application, which is, let's say, uh, on, on on which is very close to uh, how can I say the production version, and they are working on it and they are making the changes. They are just starting their branches and they are changing. They are testing their changes and they are debugging their code on these remote applications. So. Uh, they are taking, they are just deploying their solutions uh, to these development instances freely without actually interfering with anyone. And they are uh, taking advantage of fully remote development. But uh, like the question here is that how you can debug such things? So if you wanted to do local debugging, you basically cannot. So, you know, the, all the application is running on some other machine and uh, it's not. Uh, Actually, possible to to uh, debug this application by just you know uh, you know pausing, playing, changing the code using local debugging. So in this case, like you may think that like remote debugging would be you know would be good. You know uh, all the uh, IDs and you know, all the uh, different solutions uh, have the remote debugging option, which lets you debug an application which is not uh, necessarily in your machine but running on some remote machine. Uh, this is also an opportunity. This is also an uh, alternative of uh, understanding uh, the debugging the applications uh, for remote. Uh, but uh, but actually, this is not the best way of doing this. So I'm going to explain in a minute that why it is not the the best option. Uh, but like remote debugging also doesn't uh, resolve. Like remote debugging solves some issues, but it creates another problems. Now, now I'm, I'm going to explain those. So let me just like clarify what is remote debugging first. So you are just debugging someone else's program while it's running on another machine. It can be your program also, but like you are debugging a program or application, let's say, uh, which is not like on your local. You are just like making a port connection to some other machine and you are just like stopping, pausing and playing uh, this application there. So which means that debugging application should keep a port open for debugger to interfere with the flow. So which means that 
uh, like there is this open port which is also open to for everyone. So like this creates a security problem. Uh, you know, uh, you, you like now like some other application which is not debugger application can uh, take this port and you know like provide like create any damage. Uh, that you can imagine to your application. If this is something missing, mission critical, it, it becomes even more critical in this case. So, uh, and remote debugging lets you debug one service at a time. So let's say you have a distributed application and your remote debugger is connected to one of the compute nodes. Uh, and let's say you have like several microservices working together for, for, for some purpose. You can debug only one of them at some time, at, at a time. So for this reason, uh, it is not very practical to use remote debugging, uh, you know. And like I, I'm not even mentioning uh, the the like you know you are breaking the standards. You are just alone debugging this. You are not actually be able to collaborate with your colleagues or friends. So these are the problems that comes to mind uh, when you are talking about remote debugging the applications. So you know uh, I always told about this, but let, let's let's go over once again. So traditional remote debugging is not suitable for debugging remote applications on cloud because you know you may be pausing someone else's service. So like let's say you have a microservice architecture and your colleague uh, deployed the service, then you are just sharing it. Let's say when you are when, when you have a shared development applications, you may be pausing their application by like while you are just debugging their application. So you may need to set up a breakpoint there. Uh, but this application uh, will be now uh, not be able to uh, get any other requests. As I said, like open port is open for everyone, and the people can take advantage of this. And you may miss the few pictures still by debugging one service at a time. So let's say you have a very distributed uh, architecture, and uh, using that, uh, you you only debug one service at a time, but you may probably. Uh, you'll probably miss the full picture. So uh, an, an event like a request comes to your, your uh, application, you know, the handler, the patcher service gets the request, right? Something like make some application, make some, uh, you know, arrangements about it, like rise it to, to a queue and some other application consumes it and like this rise, and it notifies application and two other applications gets notified and starts to do something. So when you are debugging only one of these applications, you may not, you may be actually missing what's going on on the all the you know other applications, uh, which is actually working in the same uh, transaction. As I said, like it's uh, the remote debugging is a one man show. You are just sitting here uh, as a developer, and you are just like looking at the screen, uh, debugging one side at a time, and you are alone. So you, you and it's not like a kind, something recordable if you are not recording your screen, of course. Uh, and you are not uh, able to collaborate with your colleagues there. So like you may say that, hey, Imran, like you said, local debugging is not an alternative. And you said remote debugging has many problems. So what are we going to do with like, debugging our applications? So actually, uh, when I'm talking with people, I see that every team has different methods. But I'm going to list some of the, like actually two of the most common uh, methodologies of debugging remote applications. So the first and the the the, the uh, mostly known and mostly visited uh, source is logs. So your remote applications are uh, generating logs, uh, to, and you, you may see some log streams happening, uh, flowing uh, between several resources. So. Let's say you have like four services, which means that you have four different log streams. And if you have also log streams for, uh, you know, non-compute resources, you 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 have like uh, at least like four, five, maybe six, maybe seven log streams that you need to check when you want to debug an application which is running on a remote app, remote, remote machine, which is mostly the cloud. So like the, there are many log streams. And let's say that you are just uh, trying to see the full picture and you, are, you need to correlate the logs for, of the same transaction. You know, uh, there are uh, many open source alternatives of uh, doing this with tracing, uh, but again, like you need to implement such things. So you can, you may you need to implement some uh, handler using, uh, which is like, um, uh, how can I say, uh, suitable uh, to work with open telemetry or open tracing. 
and you need to still implement the correlation and you need to all like the you need to maybe you may not have the the access to the logs of several services so like in, in especially enterprise applications so you have your service you have the logs of that service and your service is being called by other service or calling other service but you may not be reading the logs of that service because of the ownership of ownership of the service and the logs this can also be you know when you know organizational and cultural problem in the in the teams but this is something very common and you know, uh, cost uh, is a, is also another concern for logs. Like ingesting logs or um, keeping storing logs is, is problematic. You know, uh, most of the time, like uh, when we can talk about the applications, the biggest cost item is not uh, mostly the, the the compute, but is you know the logs and the database. So so cost can be uh, go very high when your application starts to get more traffic. So for this reason, logs uh, is not the, you know, the best way. And the lastly, uh, when you look at the logs to debug the application and when you don't understand something, you need to write some, some new logs to, to make it more understandable. And which means that you need to deploy the application again. And this will create a very long running uh, development cycles just to find a bug. So you, know, you, you see the problem, you look at the logs, you don't understand them, you, you type new logs, deploy it, you look at the logs, you understand of something, fix it, uh, like deploy it and you see it's working. So it is like a very time consuming, very ineffective methodology. So the other, uh, uh, and like, you know, the, my, my actually, I'm mostly prone to this one. I have an APM that I'm using for post-production issues and now I'm developing an application and I don't understand what's going on there. So you can just use an APM solution, you know, which, like which nicely integrates logs and traces and metrics for most of the APM solutions. And you can see what's going on, uh, on, 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 well, on your application while you're developing it. But this is like more like an using a solution, using a tool out of its purpose. Uh, it is still working, I can say. <laughs> I, I can say it's, it's, not, it's not bad either because I'm also doing this. Uh, but there might be add some some other good ways of doing Slack, and there are also like some bad parts of using APM. Not bad, but not very. How can I say beautiful? Uh, using APM for debugging uh, pre-production. So uh, you can say that like you cannot replace the mechanics of debugging with APM solutions. So you are just like looking at an event which happened on the past, and you are just trying to debug this, like understand what's going on, uh, what was going on in the application bus by just checking the APM. So you cannot just pause the application, change the code, like, you know, go step by step. You cannot replace the mechanics of debugging. So, and most of the APM solutions, maybe all of the APM solutions are not optimized for pre-production issues. So it's like, uh, like how many of you may be integrated uh, APM solution to their CI machines to understand what's going on. It's not a very common practice that the companies doing this, but uh, the, the reason is that they are not very optimized for this purpose and they cannot actually uh, be very informative about this if this is a CI call or this is a customer call. So you need to use this tool wisely and, and you know distinguish the, the requests coming from your customers and requests coming from your CI mission. And it can be very costly because, you know, like APMs are not cheap as you know, and uh, like if you just want to debug such application and if you are just like uh, generating data, you know, consuming a, you know, invocation numbers for your APM solution, it can actually be a very costly uh, to use such a solution just for debugging. So here I am to, to talk about like non-intrusive debugging. Uh, which is also known as non-breaking breakpoints. So you are just like your application is running there. You are debugging it like you are debugging a local application. You are setting breakpoints, but these breakpoints actually don't stop the application. So like, for example, let's go back to the problem of uh, pausing someone else's application. This is not happening. So you are just like, uh, you are just setting a breakpoint. This breakpoint, uh, you know, you, is mostly you know sponsored by some other vendor, uh, and this like has some agents working on this purpose, and this agent intercept the ex execution on the line of breakpoint, 
and takes the snapshot of where I was during the execution and let the, let the execution flow. And this uh, taking a snapshot is like less than 20 microseconds of overhead for most of the solutions. And uh, after you get the, the, the data, you can send it asynchronously to, to any type of collectors uh, to, to make your uh, research after that. So the key here is that we are not pausing the application, but we are, we are just like letting it flow. Uh, but we are still very uh, getting very knowledgeable about what happened at this point by just checking the by just checking the the trace point results. So, but there is there's still a missing part, which is like is like I'm just like returning back to the data data example. You have this uh, distributed application service A takes the request from customer and does something you know kind kind of process it and. Uh, write some result to, to a queue. And the service B takes this result, uh, like consumes this result and does another stuff and writes this, writes this to a, a database. So like, let's say you, you put a breakpoint and let's say you wanted to debug this flow for some purpose. And you put a breakpoint at service A line 10 and the service B line 20. So you have two breakpoints, but they are in different applications. How we are going to integrate these, like integrate the events of these trace points of the same transaction? So, like service A, like can can work 10,000 10, times, and the service B, of course, can can work again at the at first time. But like, how would you pair the the trace point events of the same transaction? For this reason, you still need to have a solution for distributed tracing. So. Uh, like you need to connect the dots with distributed tracing. So you need to be able to navigate or step into uh, a trace point or, or just like go to the next trace point uh, like by, while as if you were actually debugging a normal application, local application. So this is done by uh, distributed tracing. And you can also always do this, as I said, like just like using uh, open open source platforms, and you can develop uh, like very nice standards of uh, distributed tracing uh, with uh, open telemetry, and also open tracing. But uh, you know, this uh, is this will be kind of a costly solution for you to to uh, to have to develop a distributed tracing solution just for debugging again. It's, it's not money cost this time, but it's about like uh how can i say the the engineering cost and you need to own this thing and after that like this is your tracing uh, uh, solution now and you need to own this you need to maintain it you need to solve the problems of this as well this is actually always like taking you away from uh get uh, taking you away from the actual problem that you are trying to solve for your customers I'd like to show how uh, non-intrusive breakpoints are working uh, with an example that like, uh, we are using them uh, in, the, in Tundra, but like I don't want to show our application uh, at, at my demo. And that's why I actually created a demo, uh, you know, using a very popular uh, example of pet clinic. So like, uh, this is like, a, Pet clinic application, but just to make it more, you know, complicated, we made it a, a kind of a more distributed application. So a pet clinic application now has a pet clinic notification application. When 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 you are adding a visit, pet clinic application uh, writes it and writes something to SQS and it's like the notification app consumes SQS and application and you know uh, notify the 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 person using SNS. So this is kind of a uh, very straightforward uh, application. And like, let's say you'd like to debug such application. So let's say that you wanted to make sure that there is there is an, uh, the, 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 you know, this uh, uh, transaction is happening correctly, or let's say you want to debug something. So let's say you want to understand if the notification is sent to you a visit. So let's set that, uh, let's set that break trace point here. Uh, so I'm calling it trace point. 
uh, by the way, for the reason that like this uh, breakpoint uh, integrated with uh, this retracing. That's why we are calling it trace point. So and like we are just like putting uh, trace points to like where you are sending SMS to the person, and it's, like where you are just finding a veter veterinarian for this person. So I like to you know uh, like run this application. I like to add a visit uh, for my hamster. And when I add a visit for my hamster, uh, I expect to get a notification. So you know, uh, for my bird, I got I got this request. By for my hamster, uh, I somehow cannot. So I'm turning back to the, the here, and seeing that at this place, uh, vets like there is no veterinarian. So so like my application just cannot go to the send SMS method. So like when there's no veterinarian uh, available, my application don't, don't say me that doesn't say me that hey there is no veterinarian I cannot make you a, a reservation and just like making a reservation and not notifying me like the, the 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 most terrible scenario happens actually. So I see that this this problem is like because of this and now I can actually fix uh, it like by by checking it and you can also also jump in uh, like the mystery trace and you can see that. A notification app started, but it couldn't send anything to SNS and it couldn't notify the user. But like, it, it, for example, when you want to add a, a notification to your uh, you know, normal service, like when there's a veterinarian for a bird, uh, it is here and you can see that like notification already is sent. And also you can also see that uh, like the not, uh, notification is created and the SMS is being sent. You can see this is the message that being sent to phone that we the, we are meeting with veterinarian Henry for our for your pet named Bibish. So you see that like how uh, useful to to understand uh, what's happening in the application. Uh, I'd like to wrap up my talk uh, uh, by just like uh, talking about like what we learned today. And uh, you know, as you can see, uh, remote development is the new way. Uh, like the, our our survey is so that like Slack already doing this. Like remote development is the new way of building modern architectures. But like when you want to debug such systems, uh, you know, using logs is time consuming, not very effective, costly, uh, and remote debugging is not secure because you know you are just like keeping a port open. It's intrusive. You are just pausing someone else's system. And you, it is slow, you know, it is uh, not as straightforward, like it is adding some overheads, uh, even in the, you know, the best case. And for this reason, we have the solution as non-intrusive debugging and to extract data out of remote applications without actually pausing them, without posing an uh, overhead onto them. And, um, and but we still need to connect the direct breakpoints of the non-intrusive debugging and for this reason, for this purpose, the, the, all the, the, the most proper solution is using distributed tracing. So, you know, you, you can do this by just like uh, uh, integrating distributed tracing by, break, uh, by, by the breakpoints, but you need to implement two different stuff. And that's why we are actually, you know, how can I say, instead of spending time and energy and money on uh, developing such systems, you can use a third party. Uh, for this purpose. So this brings me uh, to the end of my presentation. And I'm actually, uh, I was really excited to be recording this in my living room. I hope that it was uh, also helpful for you. And you can always reach out to me by using my email over to Twitter. My DMs are always open. And if you want also from LinkedIn. And thanks a lot for listening to me.